So this problem is going to deal with section 1231. There's actually not going to be any section 1245 on here. You can see that in the chart. We'll talk about 1245 and other problems. But the first thing I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and I want you to draw out this chart. This chart has eight rows, nine rows, I'm sorry, nine rows including the header row. And then it has six columns. And the columns are labeled... Okay, the first column is going to be the letters and also the netting column. So we're going to label those. But then we have uh, respective columns for each topic. And we do this in a certain order because when you think about 1231, you've got to do a netting order. Okay, so we're going to go through all transactions A through G. And ultimately, this last row, we'll be done with the problem when the characterization, we have a character, the last column is done for each A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So that is our ultimate goal in this problem. We are trying to determine the character of each transaction. So let's go ahead and start. And as we go in each one, I'll explain how you're doing this and how the chart works. And then there'll be later problems where I don't do that as much. So this is going to become our baseline problem. So this is kind of a slower one. So in A, a hurricane damaged the business machine, which has been held more than one year, resulting in a $15,000 recognized loss. All right, so we're told we have a recognized loss, $15,000. So step one and step two, right? Realize gain or loss, recognize gain or, gain or loss, done. Now we go to step three, characterization. We've got a $15,000 recognized loss. So the question is, what is the character? Whenever we deal with character, remember, ultimately, there's ordinary and capital. Yes, capital can be classified as long-term and short-term, but ultimately, ordinary and capital. And the general rules and tax laws say, if it's not capital, it's ordinary. So the way we do this is we start with our general rule. We have to have a sale or exchange of a capital asset. So here in A, we've got a hurricane. A hurricane is not a sale or exchange. It is a involuntary conversion, involuntary event. So therefore, under the general rules, we cannot have capital gain, capital loss. Right? Because you need sale or exchange of a capital asset. Now, we also have to consider special rules, like section 1245 and section 1231. Now, for this problem, don't worry about section 1245. For A through G, there is no 1245. And I'll explain why in each one, but just kind of don't worry about that. I'm telling you right now. We'll do 1245 in problem 6, 7, and 8 later on. That will be built in, how 1245 fits in. But for this one, 1245 is not relevant. I'll explain why. Okay. So we also, then we have to consider 1231 after the general rules. If 1231 doesn't work, then guess what? It's going to be treated as ordinary. Because remember, if it's not capital, it's ordinary. Okay, so we have a hurricane. Again, it's not going to be general rules. However, involuntary conversions can go into section 1231. Okay? There's a sub-hodgepot and the main hodgepot. We've got two columns. We've got the sub-hodgepot here. We've got the main hodgepot here. We've got both of them. So we have to determine if this goes in either of those. If not, it's going to, again, be ordinary because by default. So hurricane, involuntary conversion, damages a business which has been held more than one year, resulting in a $15,000 recognized loss. So think about our, our sub-hodgepot and main hodgepot. We always start the sub-hodgepot. That's the order you should go in. Sub-hodgepot first, then consider main hodgepot. So sub-hodgepot only applies to involuntary conversions, held for more than one year, not personal use, this is business, and finally it has to be natural disaster, theft, or shipwreck. Well, a hurricane is natural disaster, so we have a $15,000 recognized loss in A that goes into the sub-hodgepot because it applies in the sub-hodgepot. So we have just done A. Let's move on to B. B, a mechanical rake used in business, was sold on September 1st. It had been acquired on April 1st of the current year. The $600 recognized gain disregard recapture, even though recapture would be irrelevant because you're going to see what's going to happen. So by the way, in A, yes, we determined to sub-hodgepot section 1231 gain. I'm sorry, loss, loss. We don't know the character, though, until the end of the year, until all the transactions have been put into the hodgepot, right? So that's why we don't do the character yet. We just put it there to do netting later on. We have to net at the end. We've gone through all A through G. And by the way, the reason why 1245 recapture does not apply in A is because it's a loss. It has to be a gain for that reason. So in B, 
We've got mechanical rake used was sold for $600. So let's go through our rules. We have a sale or exchange. Yes, we have a sale. Is it a capital asset? No. It's a mechanical rake used in business. That's a depreciable piece of business personal property. Therefore, it's number two on our list. It's not a capital asset. So we don't have capital gain, capital loss under general rule. So now we go to 1231. It's not the sub hodgepot because sub hodgepot only applies to involuntary conversion, not sale or exchange. We go to the main hodgepot. Main hodgepot does have sale or exchange of business assets, but they have to be held for more than one year. It was acquired on April 1st. It was sold September 1st. Guess what? That's not going to apply. That's not going to qualify for 1231. So what does that mean? We're going to have for B $600 of ordinary gain. If something is considered ordinary after you go through the analysis, you can go ahead and classify it as ordinary in the last characterization because nothing's going to change that. It's not going to be changed. Okay? It's not going to be changed. By the way, 1245 does not apply in B, even though it's a gain and there was depreciation and the reason or potentially depreciation. The reason why is because it was already ordinary. You don't reclassify ordinary income for 1245 purposes because that would just make it ordinary to ordinary. No, makes no sense. Okay, C. Farmland with un unharvested crops, which has been held over four years and used in business, was sold for a $12,000 recognized gain. All right. So we've got a sale of business real property. We've got a sale or exchange, but it's not a capital asset because it's number three on our list. Business real property. So we go to 1231. It's not the sub hodgepot because sub hodgepot is only involuntary conversion. Is it the main hodgepot? Yes. How is it the main hodgepot? Because it's a sale or exchange of business property, business real property held for more than a year. It's not personal use. So what does that mean? Right, it's not more than a year because it's held over four years. So that $12,000 gain goes in the main hodgepot. Again, we net when we're done with G. We net the 1231 hodgepots when we're done with G. We don't net them now. We net when we're done with all transactions for the year. Okay, moving on to D. So in D, recognize the $10,000 gain on insurance recovery from theft of a business tractor which has been owned for 10 years. So we start with, is it a sale or exchange? No. So it's not going to be the general rule of capital gain. However, 1231, is it the sub hodgepot? Yes. We've got involuntary conversion, natural disaster, theft, or shipwreck. This is a theft, right? Of, biz, of um, property held for more than a year. It's been held for 10 years. And it's not personal use. Okay? So that means that it's going to be a $10,000 gain in the sub hodgepot. And we are done with D. E. A silo used in business was burned involuntarily, not on purpose, on December 6th, resulting in a $1,000 recognized loss. It was purchased on May 8th of the current year. So we go through our analysis. Can't be capital gain, capital loss under general rules. Why? It's a capital asset, right? And it's also involuntary event, both. So then we go to section 1231. Is it the sub hodgepot? Well, let's go through. If there is a fire involuntary fire, but it hasn't been held for more than a year. So sub hotspot, main hotspot, neither of them are going to qualify. So therefore, right, it's been held from May 8th, December 6th, that's a year or less. Therefore, it's going to be a $1,000 recognized loss, ordinary loss. So under other, we put a $1,000 loss and it's going to be ordinary. Again, if it's ordinary, ultimately, you can go ahead and classify that in the last column that we care about. Going on to F. So F, we got a grist mill. A grist mill is a, a real property used in business, was sold, resulting in a $3,000 recognized loss. It had been used for 11 years. Okay, so we've got business real property sold. So we have a sale or exchange of business real property, so it can't be capital gain, capital loss under general rules. Why? It's number three on our list. Business real property, right? So then we go to 1231. It's not involuntary conversion, so it can't be sub hodgepot, right? It's a sale. So we go to the main hodgepot. Sale or exchange, yes, 
of a business asset, right? Business real property held for more than a year. It's been held for 11 years. Guess what? The $3,000 recognized loss qualifies as a section 1231 main hodgepot. So we put it here in the main hodgepot, $3,000 recognized loss. Again, we can't net yet until we're done with G. So then we go to G. 15 shares of Apple stock, Apple Corp, whatever you want to think, which have been held for more than four months. I'm sorry, held for four months, sorry. Were sold for $1,800 recognized gain. So we go through our general rules. Do we have a sale or exchange? Yes. We have a sale of the stock. Is it a capital asset? Yes. Right? Remember, stock of a corporation in this class, this these presentations, we're going to assume that it's going to be considered an investment, so therefore it's a capital asset. They're not going to be broker dealers. So we have a capital asset, sale or exchange, $1,800 capital gain. The last question, is it long-term or short-term? Short-term, right? It's been held for a, uh, a year or less. It's four months. So we've got a $1,800 short-term capital gain. Okay. So now we've gone through A through G. Now, the last thing we need to do is remember, we ultimately need to get the character for each of these items, A through G. That's the last column. So far, we've only got the character for three items. So now we do the sub and main hotspot netting. Remember, go back to your section 1231 chart. So we always start the sub hotspot netting. We net a $15,000 loss with a $10,000 gain. We get a net loss of $5,000. If you go back to your, your chart, your 1231 chart, what happens if the sub hotspot, sub hotspot results in a loss? Everything is treated as ordinary. So ordinary and ordinary. Nothing goes over to the main hodgepot. So now we net the main hodgepot, the 12,000 gain for nine, with the $3,000 loss with a $9,000 gain. What happens if the main hodgepot is positive, a gain? Everything is treated as long-term capital gain or long-term capital loss. And now everything... All the characters have been provided for A through G. You can review now going through. And please make sure to rewatch going through each of those items. In the later videos, we're going to use the same chart. We're going to go a little bit quicker now. I'm not going to go through every little step like I've done this one because the idea is the same process. Just we're going to add in 1245 later on. By the way, I mentioned why 1245 didn't apply. A, I told you because it's a loss, you need a gain. B, I just told you to disregard, but it's really because there was our ordinary gain anyways. And C, it's a uh, real property. So 1245 doesn't apply. And D, we've got a, um, that one we can disregard. That's ordinary. That's well, we can disregard that one. D, disregard that amount of, uh, depreciation recapture as well. E, Real property, F, real property, and G, there's no depreciation recapture. So that's why we didn't have section 1245. All right, so I'll see you in later videos.